Where the devil is she? I, I don't know, sir. Her room is empty. I... I am here. I could not sleep. I went to the chapel. To pray. You may open the curtains. It is daylight now. She is dead. That, of course, is Ingrid Pitt as the seductive, predatory vampire Carmilla in The Vampire Lovers. In her movies, Ingrid is never the victim. She hated playing them and instead revels as a huntress. There is a knowing quality to her performances, something preternatural, as if she knows more than you do, as if she can sense you there watching the screen. And if you let your guard down long enough, she might just catch you. Hi, I'm movie man Eric Houston, and like a lot of you, I'm a big Ingrid Pitt fan. She's a performer whose indefinable magnetism has drawn quite a cult of fans and admirers. Now, Ingrid is remembered primarily as a horror movie star, but she disliked watching horror movies herself. You see, she'd already lived through the greatest horror of the 20th century. Ingrid was born in Poland on November 21st, 1937, her original given name now long forgotten. Her mother was a Polish Jew and her father was a German scientist who refused to build Nazi rockets. In 1942, the Reich rounded up her entire family. Ingrid and her mother were separated from her father and sister and sent to the Stutthof concentration camp for three horrifying years. Day after day, little Ingrid watched helpless as her friends died before her eyes. One day, it was their turn, and Ingrid and her mother were marched into the woods to be shot. Somehow, they managed to escape and were rescued and hidden by brave partisans. When the war finally ended, Ingrid and her mother scoured the refugee camps and eventually found her father and sister. But her poor father, broken by his experiences, would live only another five years. For the next several years, Ingrid and her family lived in East Berlin. At age 13, Ingrid was already a vocal critic of the government. She was also an aspiring actress and, in 1950, found her first job in the famous Berliner Ensemble, a theater group founded by Bertolt Brecht. As Ingrid steeled herself backstage for her debut performance, she received word that the police had arrived to arrest her. Ingrid fled the theater, still in costume. With the East German police hot on her heels, she dove into the Spree River and swam for West Berlin, where she was saved by American soldier Laud Roland Pitt Jr. The two wed, but the marriage didn't last. Ingrid moved to Spain and began to appear in small parts in a number of movies, including Orson Welles' Chimes at Midnight and David Lean's Dr. Zhivago. She also worked as a stunt performer, a rally car driver, and even a matador. 1968 brought her first big break in Where Eagles Dare. Beauty and Danger, personified by German actress Ingrid Pitt, who actually made her own daring escape from East Berlin. You know, to be out here in Austria at this time is like living through the entire war again. That role <laughs> caught the attention of Hammer Studios. The famed horror house was now well beyond its heyday, and its once controversial lurid pictures had become passé. Producers planned a final reinvention for the studio, deciding to up the sex and nudity and even debut their first real female antagonist. The Vampire Lovers was a hit and was followed soon after by the Countess Dracula. Look at me, Dobie. Look at me. <laughs> What will your daughter say? She arrives tomorrow, and she'll find you as young as she is. Will she? These two movies made Ingrid's film career and gave her a legion of lifelong admirers. Both films do ratchet up the sexuality of the already bawdy hammer horror films, but neither feel especially gratuitous. Anchored by Pitt's performances, they instead create a mood of maturity and sensuality that echoes back to the suave and sensual Count Dracula of Stoker's original novel, 
trading gore and murder for a victim's complete physical and emotional surrender. She'll be quiet now. Dissatisfied with the scripts they offered her, Ingrid left Hammer behind. For the next couple of years, she bounced from studio to studio, project to project. She again played a vampire, this time opposite John Pertwee in The House That Dripped Blood. We loved your film so much, we wanted you to become one of us forever. Welcome to the club. And she enjoyed a small but memorable role in the British cult classic, The Wicker Man a part that only cemented her status as England's preeminent queen of horror. Several TV roles followed on shows like Smiley's People and Doctor Who. In the 1980s, Ingrid largely retired from acting and began working behind the camera. She developed a TV series for Argentinian television about a deposed president, but had to abandon the project when she was forced out of the country by yet another barbaric government. Ingrid eventually became an author and penned 14 novels, starting with 1982's Cuckoo Run, which was about a female spy. Over the next couple of decades, various producers tried to tempt her back into pictures. At last, in the 2000s, she appeared in a handful of small parts, but never regretted her choice. She enjoyed her writing and her life in England. She enjoyed her fans and her family, and she continued her life as a daredevil, earning a pilot's license and a black belt in karate. Ingrid died of heart failure in 2010, but not before completing one last film, an animated short called Ingrid Pitt Beyond the Forest which at last dramatized her childhood experiences in the concentration camp. It's hard to imagine a more fascinating or deeply traumatic life than Ingrid's. And while she never much enjoyed talking about her early life, it never stopped her or defined her. Ingrid was a woman who defined herself, leaving a legacy on both page and screen that is as immortal as the vampires she played so well.